Okay, dear colleagues, uh, it's I think time, um, time to now to begin the session. Uh, and the, this session is on, uh, on high frequency technology, microwaves and microwaves. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers to inviting me here and to present my papers, two papers, and uh, also to, to chair this session. This session is uh, actually a great honor for me. Uh, so uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have five presentations and only one hour for totally, so I think it should be around uh, 12 minutes by presentation, I think. Uh, so I think my, the first paper, I think, is, uh, is uh, presented by myself. And uh, uh, let me show the PowerPoint. So this is the first one. Uh, okay, this is the first out of my two presentations, and uh, uh, it, the title is Characterization of Rough uh, Fractal Surfaces from Backscattered Radar Data. Uh, so basically, okay, first of all, uh, this, uh, this research has been performed at the National Technical University of Athens uh, School of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Engineering, where I have the honor to teach as a faculty member, along with, uh, this is my name, Frankos, and this is along with my, some PhD students of mine. Uh, now, this work uh, is in the area, in the area of uh, remote characterization of rough surfaces using backscattered uh, radar data. So, this is in the area of uh, uh, remote sensing, radar remote sensing. And uh, here I present to you, uh, I would, I would uh, think that this is a rather, rather novel idea, prob probably. Uh, uh, it actually, uh, you will see that actually the basic physics of it is um, uh, is uh, uh, the resonance phenomena between the interrogating electromagnetic radar wave and the rough surface. And especially we have in mind in this stage, we have in mind the sea surface in this, in this stage. So it is a remote characterization of the sea state from backscattered radar data. This is the topic of, uh, of uh, this uh, problem, of this presentation. Uh, so, uh, in a very short time, I'll give you an idea, an idea of this. You will see, of course, that the mathematics will be rather complicated. However, I think the physics of it is rather simple. Uh, so, in this, uh, uh, in this stage, uh, we have a rough surface. Uh, actually, in, this, in our simulation, we propose a fractal surface for describing the roughness of the scatterer. And here is one simple two-dimensional model, two-dimensional model of the rough surface. Uh, actually, now my students are now are uh, also uh, uh, working in the in the three D case, which is the realistic case. But this is the simplest model, two D two D model. So we have the incident uh, electromagnetic radar wave and the scattered electromagnetic wave with the angle of incidence and angle of scattering. Uh, okay, so in this paper we concentrate at the backscatter direction. There were older researches. During uh, my studies, for example, in the University of Pennsylvania about 25 years ago, uh, we concentrated in the bistatic uh, scattering. Here in this paper, we will concentrate to monostatic radar for the backscattered field. And here we have the geometry, the angle of incidence, the angle of scattering, and the fractal rough surface, which is used here for simulation purposes. Uh, okay, so uh, here is the mod our model for simulations, for simulations for the uh, for the rough surface, which is this function is an, an a fractal and al almost periodic function. I'm calling this almost periodic because uh, here uh, <coughs> these uh, spatial frequencies are not int are not integer integer multiples of each other. Uh, so we have not a periodic function, but we have an almost periodic function. Actually, we have a, f a fractal function. So this is the model, one-dimensional model of our rough, uh, rough surface. Uh, these are the spatial frequencies. These are the amplitudes. This is called the fractal dimension. And uh, we, we will see later that uh, uh, 
uh, if, if the fractal dimension goes to one, we have um, just a simple sinusoidal surface. And as the fractal dimension increases from one to two, we have increased roughness, increased roughness of the surface. And actually, we're going to calculate the fractal dimension d from backscattered uh, radar data as a function of frequency. Our data, actually our data are spectral, spectral uh, we have spectral data, we have uh, measurements at different radar frequencies. This is a spectral, spectral method. Okay, uh, so, uh, so this is the RMS height of the rough surface. And this is a normalization constant and these are random phases. Uh, so this is the model of the surface. Now, the, the next comes the electromagnetic, electromagnetic method. Uh, this is rather complicated, but uh, the mathematics are rather complicated. Uh, for, <coughs> so for this simulation, we have, of course, a rather complicated uh, mathematical model for the, for the scattering of the waves. So, uh, we are using Kirchhoff approximation for uh, electromagnetic scattering. To give you an idea, this is the scattered field, this is the uh, fractal rough surface, and uh, now uh, Vx and Vz quantities are related to, are given by these equations, where is the, this is the wave number, the angle of incidence and the angle, the angle of scattering. So these formulas are for bistatic scattering, uh, for uh, uh, bistatic uh, configuration, more general, question, uh, general equations. So R here is the local, well-known local Fresnel reflection coefficient, and we have also these quantities P and Q appearing in this equation. This is the well-known in books, in literature, Kirchhoff approximation, uh, Kirchhoff approximation for the scattering of electromagnetic waves from, uh, from rough surfaces. Uh, and of course, the, this, there are some uh, uh, limitations to this approximate method like uh, uh, the surface, for example, the surface cannot be very, very rough if you have very deep uh, corrugation, very large RMS height, sigma, then this approximation becomes worse and worse. So this is for more smooth, let's say, more or less surfaces. Uh, okay, this approximation. Okay. Uh, okay, R0 is the distance from, uh, okay, from, the observ from the observer, from the origin, let's say from the origin, and L is the, 2L is the uh, path size, path size, and K is the wave number. Okay, so this is uh, Kirchhoff approximation scattering formula, <coughs> well known in the literature, and in order to go ahead, uh, here we normalize this uh, scattered field. Uh, we may actually we are making a normalization to that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have too much time to explain all the details of the thing. Uh, so after normalizing it, uh, we have the scattering coefficient, which is the scattered field at a particular dire scattering direction, normalized uh, by this factor. Actually, this factor is, is the, also in the by, stat, by, scat, by static uh, direction, okay. Uh, so, actually, this was the formula used by my PhD students to calculate the scattering of the waves. Uh, this is actually my students uh, calculated this in MATLAB. This, uh, they made the simulation in MATLAB. They calculated this integral in MATLAB in uh, our modern times. And uh, uh, this term has to do with edge effects, uh, scattering from the edges of the surface. Uh, which is uh, neglected in our case because we have a large uh, scatterer and uh, the main body of the contribution comes from this integral. Um, so we assume a rather large scatterer, electrically large scatterer. And uh, to, uh, to, come, to come to the point, uh, also we have an analytical formula previously divide, divide, uh, described in the literature for the bistatic scattering coefficient. Uh, Okay, so this is the analytical formula. It is rather complicated. Please don't be panic of this. It's rather complicated, but it gives a good physical insight. So we have infinite summation of some Floquet modes, and these are Bessel functions. Uh, we have a product of Bessel functions, and these are the well-known sync functions. Sync functions, well-known in the scattering theory, sync functions. So. Uh, we, we, of course, went into detail in this formula and we have a clear 
physical understanding of this formula. Uh, okay, who this gives you useful physical insight. Now, let, let, let me move forward. There are some uh, simulation parameters. <coughs> uh, this is the RMS height of the RMS height of our uh, rough surface. Uh, angle of visitance and angle of scattering. So we have by, uh, back scattering only. Uh, this is the path size. The most important is this thing that we are using step frequency radar waveform, step frequency radar. So uh, the, the, main, the initial carrier radar frequency is 10 gigahertz, and uh, we're using uh, M pulses, M uh, pulses, which constitute a burst of the radar, and this M equals 200 uh, in this simulation, and the bandwidth is 1 gigahertz. So actually, this is a spectral method. Uh, this is, the, I think, the main point. We are using, we are having, um, uh, we are measure or calculating the backscatter electromagnetic <coughs> field for different frequencies, and uh, uh, the physics of the phenomenon of the method actually is, is resonance. So not to uh, to tire you very much. So if this is your scatter, the scatter may be the C waves that we have in mind. Are the scatter is of the order of some centimeters or some meters. And uh, similar of similar magnitude is the wavelength. So the interrogating uh, radar wavelength is of the of the same order with the scatterer that we have in mind, which is the sea surface. Uh, so we have resonance phenomena. Okay. So uh, so this is step frequency radar waveform, uh, and uh, some results of our calculations. Uh, the, okay. This is uh, this is my student did that in uh, MATLAB environment. MATLAB environment, of course, and uh, here the parameters are here. Once again, if D goes D, D go, uh, goes to one, we have a rather smooth surface. Here is D is close to two, and we have rather uh, uh, large roughness of the surface. And uh, to give you uh, actually the our main findings, the main finding is the following: it has to do with the slopes. So we have a spectral method. And uh, we observed the following, which looks rather, uh, rather uh, reasonable, I think, uh, that for large roughness, uh, we have, okay, so this is the, this is the, backscatter, the backscatter coefficient as a function of frequency. We have the main lobe over here. Somewhere is the main lobe, the, the main backscatter, backscattering wave. And uh, uh, at uh, different frequencies, we have, uh, we have different magnitude of the, of the, uh, uh, the internal signal, and um, uh, uh, here we, uh, we have a rather large slope. Uh, on the contrary, for a rather smooth sinusoidal surface, the slope in the, in the spectral regime, the, the, the slope is rather, rather small. Uh, to our uh, understanding, this is the following. If you have a very rough scatterer, then you, uh, you have uh, many resonance phenomena so, and, and at each particular resonance, is resonance with different size of scatterers, uh, you have different uh, scatter, uh, scattered electric field strength. So, you have like an anomalous behavior. If your scatter is rather smooth, like a sensoidal over here, then uh, our understanding is that um, uh, at these resonances, you have actually resonance with the uh, same or uh, similar strength. Okay. So I think clearly there is a good physics behind, very simple physics uh, behind it, uh, which is a resonance phenomena. The mathematics might be uh, in this simulation rather hard, but the physics I think is rather simple to our understanding. So with increasing uh, fractal dimension, increasing increased roughness of the surface, as you can see here, uh, the slope of the of the side low, the side the slope of the Backscattered field in the spectral domain increases. So you have slope is very small here, the slope becomes larger and larger and larger. Okay, so uh, just to give you uh, the idea of it, this is actually this is the main result. After that, of course, uh, okay, my students uh, you made also a learning method to calculate the fractal dimension of the surface from the backscatter data. And uh, now also my students now also include the, the signal to noise ratio. I will going to present this in our next conference in Athens this October, the influence of the noise, this uh, radar method, 
and of course, of course, the 3D model, which is more realistic. This is the main idea of. I think this is, should be. This looks like a novel method to our to our knowledge. Uh, okay, so uh, since I don't have too much time, here are some slopes. The slopes, the scattering coefficient, and the then the the frequency in the or the wave number in the horizontal axis, and the scat back scattering coefficient in the vertical axis. We have some slopes. And um, uh, the, to, perhaps to conclude, uh, we should have enough bandwidth in our method, of course. Uh, and, uh, so at least 5% bandwidth of the, out of the carrier frequency, so that the method we have enough, to have enough information as expected by physical intuition. Uh, so there are many details on that. This is the influence of the path size 2L, which is important, but I think the most important is the bandwidth to myself. From my understanding, and some simulations. Uh, my actually, my student, uh, my student, uh, made a learning method. Uh, so for different, uh, uh, for different values of fraction dimension, he uh, he used a learning method, and so for for each fraction dimension, he used different uh, random phases. So made too many simulations to calculate the values of the <coughs> fractal dimension d. So for several values of the fractal dimension d, we have uh, in our simulations we have uh, the slopes, and the student inverted that. So from the slopes, he calculates the fractal dimension, which is the remote sensing problem using radar. This is the actual remote sensing problem, and in actual life. Um, uh, where, where we intend to take real radar data to make the remote to solve this remote sensing problem by inverting this thing. So, okay. Uh, so and some uh, some analytical some uh, curve fitting calculations. Uh, so this is the now the simulations. This is the fractal dimension and this is the calculated fractal dimension. We're rather good, uh, very good results, very uh, promising results, uh, and the uh, prediction bounds of, uh, of his uh, calculations. So this, uh, to, of course, this is no noise here. We have good results uh, since there is no noise. But my student also did also, he did the research in the presence of noise and uh, he was also pro promising results. So to finish with that, uh, uh, I have tell us. And just perhaps to conclude, since I don't have time, to look at the future results, now my students, uh, 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 of course, uh, examine the influence of the signal-to-noise ratio. It's very important for the radar, of course. And, uh, and uh, we, have, uh, we have already good results, uh, promising results. And we're going to present this in our conference in Athens, International Conference, this October in Athens. And also three-dimensional problem, three-dimensional uh, model, which is very easy to, from the literature. Is the extension that my students are working on this, uh, of course, this three-dimensional model, which is real life of the sea state, of the sea surface, and is also most important, perhaps, also equally important, to have real radar data. Uh, I have the honor to participate in an international radar group, uh, in uh, okay, international radar group. So in this November, we have the meeting in Athens to obtain real data, especially for the sea surface, uh, and also probably from the ground, but. Uh, the, you know, sea surface is easier scatterer for us. But this, uh, this, uh, and this is uh, okay. This is the uh, actually the references. Professor Beritz in Italy has worked on this problem using different uh, method, using the same actually analytic method but different uh, statistical method. And this is uh, my professor at uh, University of Pennsylvania in the USA. We had all the work there, very in the uh, 2000 and even earlier. In 1996-95, we have common work on this scattering from fractal for other applications. This is, is for uh, radar applications. I think I took too much time from the from the audience. Sorry for this, and uh, that concludes my first presentation. Uh, if you have any question, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. 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 Presentation uh, says uh, we have a problem with sometimes with, uh, with the finding roughness of electrical contact. Electrical contact, they, they get a different yeah. uh, set of yeah. roughness. With about a little, a little uh, size of roughness, there was not any problem. But the problem was when the roughness was very deep. 
very difficult to detect it. Now I know that you said, do you suggest the, for these things, the, for this investigation, when the roughness is pretty high, we can increase the, the band, the, the frequency band, yes, something like yes. this? Frequency band. Uh, actually, uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, we need enough bandwidth in order to have, actually, this is a spectral method, spectral okay, method. Yeah. So we need enough band, enough information in the, on the frequency domain, yeah. Okay. So the roughness, thank you for the question, the roughness is, uh, okay, Actually, the, in this, in this uh, theoretical method, uh, we have a limitation on the, on the roughness, so rather small roughness. But actually, if you see the figures, the roughness by Professor Jack is not so, so small, it's rather a deep thing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Professor uh, 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 Bogdan, <laughs> Bogdan in, uh, in real life, of course, you don't have these limitations. In real life, you have the ra your radar data, okay. and it does uh, so our method depends on the roughness. Uh, this, this, this. Thank, you. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Alina is also your question. Uh, this uh, dimensionality coefficient d, mm -hmm. I believe that it is yes. uh, also something similar to entropy. Uh, no, no. Uh, not if, if you open your graphs where you are changing the d, not you entropy. can see that it is uh -huh. close to entropy because the ones which have lower dimensionality, they look almost like sine. Yeah, exactly. They are exactly. predictable, exactly. but the ones which we have higher, exactly. they, they, they have uh, yeah. uh, larger entropy, less predictable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, m my question is that I'm somewhat confused that because the other dimension that you are not modeling is uh, assumed to be the same. So they are like waves, yes? yes. Once you yeah, have something, yes. some amplitude in one dimension, yes. so in another dimension it is assumed to be constant, or not? Uh, no, uh, so this is a one dimensional, so in this, in this case we have, in real life, the C surface is a two dimensional, two dimensional is actually X and Y dimension, you have function Z of X and Y, so this actually we are going to, to present in our next conference. Uh, so you are not considering yeah. uh, another dimension at all? Uh, actually, this is what this, in this case. In my presentation, not, but uh, okay. this is done now by my students. So this is real life, real <laughs> life. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes, please. Yes. It is very yeah. close, at least when uh, the entropy is small, or yes. dimensionality is yes. small. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it is very similar to holographic grating, and mm -hmm. the holographic grating usually is used in optics to uh, disassemble the white beam into mm -hmm. spectral components. Mm -hmm. So, up to my understanding, similar thing supposed to happen here. Why it is not the case? Because mm -hmm. you just showed us uh, just 30 degree case. What is happening on another uh, uh, another angle? Of course, of course. Very, good, very good question. Very good question. So, our method is uh, is appears to work very well, but all not does not work only for if you have a ground radar. So if the, it's obvious for the formula also, uh, of course the method works for uh, all values of uh, angular vision. Of course I showed for 30 degrees, 30, but of course it works for, uh, except if you have grazing, very small grazing angle, it does not work. So no, you, you have to... what I'm trying yes, to say. Yes, yes, yes. That uh, in holographic grating you yeah. also have the same situation. You mm -hmm. have the lines which go up mm -hmm. and down, up and down, like, mm -hmm. like waves in the mm -hmm. sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, the result of application of holographic grating is that mm. uh, you have spectral behavior of the reflectivity. Yes. Mm -hmm. On one angle, reflectivity has a peak, as you have demonstrated. Very good. Yes. And mm -hmm. it, this peak corresponds to specific wavelength or specific yes. frequency. Exactly. So I was expecting that once the structure of reflecting surface when you will say that entropy is small or yes. dimensionality is small. Yeah. Yeah. So I was expecting that you will have the same peaks, just maybe not on, on the angle you can demonstrate. So, so I'm confused that such thing is not happening. Uh, no, I think not actually. Actually, the, my physical condition is exactly the opposite. So thank you, thank, thank you for the information about yes, your many, many methods in uh, uh, like uh, in uh, so say holographic gratings, so are very similar methods, spectral methods. But uh, I would disagree with you that uh, exactly the opposite. So once you have a very rough, rough, very rough surface, as I told you, uh, the strength of the backscattered field at some resonances is has an anomalous behavior. Anomalous behavior. Uh, on the contrary, if you have a rather smooth or regular surface, then the strength of the backscattered field at various resonances is 
the same more or less. So I expected these results from physical intuition. By the way, Linus, uh, perhaps to not to talk to you very much, but yes, by the time that is, I'm also the chairman. <laughs> so uh, I think it's uh, enough uh, for me. So it's uh, reasonable, I think. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. And we can move to the second uh, talk. Uh, okay. <coughs> so the second talk is by, let me read the title, is on the borehole electromagnetic method for exploration of coal mining both. It is given, presented by Ben Yusu of China. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bei Yu Su from China University of Mining and Technology. The title of my research is Boho Electric Magnetic Master for Exploration of Coal Mining Gulf. So this is the title of my research. It turns three parts. The first one as the background of research. The second one as the contents of my research. And the third one as the conclusions. So this is my background uh, research. And uh, what's this? Uh, this is a tag uh, marked with made in China. So here, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, anyway, how far from your country to China? In your country supermarket, you can see the product made in China. Uh, the reason maybe have the third, the first one, is labor, because China the population is so large, and also Chinese people are very diligent, so the labor is very very cheap. And the second one is the material. You know, the area of China is so large, so the natural resources is very rich, so the material also is very cheap. And the third one is uh, China government has so many policies, they encourage world company run factory in China. So maybe 10 years ago, China becomes the world factory. And uh, the next one is uh, from the 1998 to 2012, because China has a large <coughs> infrastructure construction. So this is the world factory, and this is uh, so large contributions. So what we need? We need the uh, material and energy. So in China, coal is the main energy because the first one is the price is very low. The second is in China, the coal resource is very rich, so the quality is very large. And the third one I think is the coal compared with other resources, for example gas or oil, so coal is very easily managed, even without advanced technology. So this is the consequence of using so much coin. This is the this is the air pollution. Maybe Lalu, you know, in China the air pollution is very serious. Even sometimes in daytime we drive a car, we have to turn on the lights. It's true. And the second one is a natural geological hazard. What's this? This road. Road is broken. The reason is the gulf. And what's this? And what's this? This this grass. The grass is located in the inner Mongolia. It becomes like this. The reason is behind. And the ground of the surface, and the ground of the grass, 
There are so many coal. The coal are mounted and the subsurface will subside. So they will become like this. This is for grass. If, if this is happening in rural area, in the cities, it is very dangerous for people's life. So this is for the uh, country, and uh, this is the uh, house of the resistance. So in this case, it's very dangerous for their life. Sometimes the village was located in the coal mine because so dangerous and people cannot live here. So it becomes uh, empty. And also, the Gulf makes the natural environment degradation. So in this case, the farmer cannot grow plants in the farmland. It's very, very serious for, the, for them. So this is uh, in the city. Okay. In the old, broken, uh, the, uh, the Gulf is broken, it happened. So, government pay much attention on the governance of the Gulf in the coal mine. My research field is geophysics. So, we use the geophysical method. Before the Gulf becomes very, very dangerous, we can find it. Usually, we use the method as a seismic method, and a DC resistivity method, and a geological radar method, and an electric method. This master usually be used on the surface. Okay, this master can solve like this model. We can find it before it uh, become very dangerous. And then we use those masters have solved a lot of problem of the mining go mining coal gulf. But for this case, this case means and the ground, the mine have uh, uh, several layers, so we have a problem. Because sometimes, for example, we use a seismic method. For example, we use the seismic method. We put the, 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 the source here, and the energy will pass here, because the very difference between the gulf and the and the, the farm, and the energy will return back to the subsurface. So we cannot detect uh, like this, the third one and the third one. So we have a deal. This is the uh, disadvantage of the falling, uh, falling geophysical master, and the first one is the seismic master. Seismic master is useful for the single layer, single layer like this, only one layer. But it is invalid for the multi layer, and also the cost is very expensive. Usually, we use the seismic master for oil and gas exploration. And the second is the this master. This master, master uh, because it's detection depth is very limited. It means it can detect the Gulf only it is very shallow. And the third one is the geo radars. Uh, also, geo radars detecting depth is limited and also it is invalid for the multi-layer. And also the surface electromagnetic method it is invalid for the multi-layer. So, we have a deal. If we put the source on the ground and we receive the information from the on office of the borehole, maybe we can overcome above problem mode. So this is uh, the result of the our forward modeling. Uh, this is the methodology of the researcher and uh, we use the max Maxwell equations, and we combine two equations into a Helmholtz equations. For the Helmholtz equations, we consider in the three directions, x, y, and z, we've got the three equations. 
and uh, we use the far not uh, different method. We got the matrix equations, and by the matrix equations, we got the x x is means uh, in here is uh, electric field. Okay, electric field. If we obtain the electric field, we will calculate the magnetic field. Uh, this is uh, the methodology. And also, this is a research result, and also this is a model. And uh, we put the source here, and uh, in another one, in the book hole, we put the resource uh, receiver, we will get the information, and this is the result. So now we compare the models and the result, they can match very well. It means we have some information, some information like this. In the geophysical research field, we have a master as the inverse. So, use this information, we can inverse the information of the model. It means, use the information, we can find the goal for where it is and the depth. So, this is the forward model. Okay, this is my work. And the last one is the conclusions. First, uh, I have finished the forward modeling by the finite not difference master. The second, the module result shows the Boho electrical method is useful can detect in the gulf with the uh, multi-layer. Multi the third one, the research owner realizes the forward modeling and nothing we will realize the inverse of the Boho electric method in the future. Okay. Okay, thanks very much for your kind of pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you expect to do in the future? Yes. Okay, then it will be very nice to, to share with us the results. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Also, perhaps I have a short question, personal in the audience. Uh, you have a short question. So, what is the frequency range that you, you just showed us? What is the frequency range of your words from, I don't know, this from 10 hertz to, the, I think in the last, uh, in last? The last almost the last uh, slide here. Mm -hmm. So this, what is the comment about the frequency range of your calculations? Uh, frequency? Frequency, yeah. F, the frequency of the yeah. waves. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I use uh, for yeah. 10, 10 to 100. 100. So this is it. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, so you calculate from the, is a inverse scattering problem or a direct scattering problem? So what is your data and what is your uh, findings? Right. So can you explain to me what, what, which quantity do you calculate by using the finite, I think, finite element or a finite difference? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It means that if the frequency is the high, maybe we can get the, 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 the information is over virus. That means that... So he calculates the field. He calculates the field. Yes. So it's yeah. forward scattering problem. He calculates the field actually. The field. field. It's yes. uh, not an inverse, it's a direct scattering problem. Mm -hmm. And this part, this is far on per unit. Yes, it's a transmission. Yes, transmission. From transmitter to no. just one point to the receiver. Yeah, but yes. by solving Maxwell's equations. Yes, yes. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, here, I can tell you the title, sorry. Uh, it's a waveform design with dual ramp sequence for high resolution range velocity uh, frequency modulating continuous wave radar. So it's about a continuous wave radar, FM, 
and the presentation is by Jean uh, Huan in uh, South Korea. Yeah, thank you for the chair. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Eugene Chan. I am from South Korea, so please understand my speaking English is not good. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, recently, the intelligence vehicles require radar sense detect vehicles and pedestrian. In addition, radar sense based on recognition is also required. Moreover, these days, radar sense has provided a good solution. Uh, for sensing uh, humans in various applications such as to detect uh, ray, uh, to detect and recognize humans, radar provides both high resolution and Doppler resolution. Lamp sequence based FMCW FM still means frequency moderated continuous wave. Lamp sequence based FMCW radar is a very very effective waveform to measure target range and velocity. This figure uh, is a FM stable radar uh, scheme. The transmitted signals are multi lampers with a sawtooth shape, modulation shape, in time frequency domain. Here is the piece bandwidth, T is modulation period, and N is the number of lampers. In lamp sequence based FM stable radar, the clutter is diminished in zero Doppler frequency, so we can easily distinguish between moving target and clot because clot has zero Doppler using 2D FFT processing. This figure is the base concept 2D FFT processing in lamp sequence based FMCW radar. Bit frequency is transformed into range frequency domain. Uh, in each lamp. And then, Doppler spectrum is estimated using lamp signal inside a single range beam. Oh, I'm sorry. Stop. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, in this page, uh, I present uh, the relationship between radar performance and system parameters. First, high range resolution. For high range resolution, uh, wide bandwidth is required so that receiver bit frequency is increased. If, especially if uh, High max detectable range is required. Max bit frequency is also increased. So, uh, ADC sampling rate is increased and number of uh, samples are very, very many required. Next is uh, uh, high, max high max detectable velocity. For high max detectable velocity, we should design moderation period as very, very shorter so that max bit frequency is also increased and then ADC sample rate and number of samples are increased. Last is we consider uh, high velocity resolution. In that case, uh, the number of lamp is required as so many, many lamps. So, uh, therefore, computational complexity is higher and burden from hardware and software is a problem. So this page is I uh, I will present the proposed method. Uh, first, the typical typical waveform. Uh, compared to the typical waveform, the proposed waveform is divided into two lamp sequence section. In first lamp sequence, the narrow band width is transmitted compared to the typical method. Uh, so range resolution decreases as a uh, 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 delta, delta R over K, but maximum detectable <coughs> velocity and velocity resolution are not reduced because the modulation period T and number of lamps are not changed. In second lamp sequence, 
uh, wide bandwidth is used, uh, but modulation period become longer uh, compared to the typical method, and number of lamp decreases m of k. So range resolution is range resolution is extracted as delta r, but the maximum detectable velocity increases as v max over k. As this result, velocity resolution can be still maintained as a delta v. So uh, this example uh, to explain the to explain the proposed method, we illustrate one example of range velocity to the map. We assume that single target with a 12 scattering point in detectable range and velocity. In that case, a typical method, the target with a high resolution range and velocity are detected at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12 cells. X axis is range, Y axis is velocity. In proposed method, in first uh, lamp sequence, just only 6 cells are detected. Uh, with a low range resolution and high velocity resolution. So in, in this sequence, the coarse range profile and fine velocity profiles are extracted. Next, in second uh, lamp sequence, uh, 12 cells are extracted, but when the target velocity is more than Vmax over K, the detected Doppler frequency is placed in long frequency domain. This is energy problem. But there is a solution. Uh, see this paper in detail, uh, saving presentation time, I skipped this uh, detail. Okay, uh, in this page, we analyze the hardware and, hardware and process complexity for typical method and proposed waveform. Required AD sampling rate, consumed data memory, and FFD, complexity, FFD computational complexity. First, uh, uh, in sampling frequency, uh, the maximum bit frequency is uh, determined by modulation slope, mu. Mu means uh, t, uh, b over t. In proposed method, the required AD sampling rate is k times lower than that of a typical method. And then, in data memory, in proposed method, the used data memory is k over 2 times lower than that of the typical method. Next, uh, in FFD complexity, in the proposed method with a K of 4, K means, uh, uh, K means reduction ratio, uh, the FFD complexity decreases to less than 50% of a typical method. Moreover, we also see the uh, complexity is dramatically reduced when K is larger in this period. Mm, we, okay. uh, we carried out simulation using shoulder target. The maximum detectable range and velocity are 60, 60 meter and 100 km per hour. We determined the radar parameters for waveform and FFD processing such as uh, this table. Uh, for simulation scenario, uh, we assume there seven cells, one shoulder target in range and velocity domain. In typical method result, we can find uh, six, uh, seven cells. But in proposed method, uh, first lamp sequence, just a uh, uh, few <coughs> cells are found, found. So coarse range profile and fine velocity profile. But uh, in second lamp sequence, range velocity map have a high resolution. But we can find the detected velocity cells in long position. Uh, in uh, velocity domain. Uh, this is earlier, but we can resolve this uh, problem, no problem. Okay, uh, for the required hardware resources estimation and total processing time measurement, uh, we carried out implementation based on FPGM. For high speed processing, we employed the data routing based pipeline and parallel architecture uh, in previous work. Uh, see the, my paper in uh, reference paper. The signal processing was implemented the Chiring's for text 5 using parallel HDA using uh, next uh, such as these algorithms. First, uh, we uh, we estimate the required hardware resources of typical and proposed method uh, compared to the typical waveform. Uh, uh, sliced resistors and sliced LUT 
very, very similar uh, between typical method and proposed, me proposed method. Next, uh, in proposed method, embedded memory in FPJ, uh, embedded memory resources are more consumed because the additional FFD blocks are required for both sequences. But the needed ex external memory of a typical method is two times higher than the required for proposed method. Next is the total processing time. We measure the total processing time of a typical and proposed waiver forms based on the signal processing. Compared to the typical method, the total processing in proposed method uh, reduced by more than 70 percentage, even though ADC data logging consumed twice as much time. Okay, conclusion. For high resolution range velocity of the typical ramp sequence based FS dual waveform. In this paper, we proposed a new waveform with a dual ramp sequence. In this paper, typical ramp proposed the method were implemented in Chinese Vertex 5 FPGA to estimate the total processing time and hardware resources. Uh, therefore, the proposed waveform uh, could be useful uh, for applications with high resolution range and velocity profiles. Okay, if you have a question, uh, please ask me a uh, very easy and uh, slow you know, English. <laughs> so, uh, if you uh, want to uh, answer uh, very in detail, uh, contact me, email, or uh, lunch, lunch break time. So, okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation. Questions, please? Perhaps I might have, with the audience, not say you might uh, have a short comment. Uh, perhaps, uh, uh, from my knowledge, perhaps uh, the, the concept called ambiguity function, you know, in, from radar theory, perhaps uh, the use of ambiguity function might be interesting, you know. Uh, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the use of ambiguity function. It's an uh, ambiguity function is, let's say, an extension of Fourier transform and, uh, and autocorrelation function and is in used in radar theory. Uh, to examine the accuracy, uh, uh, accuracy, the, you know, yeah, the accuracy, yeah, accuracy and the resolution of the yeah. targets yeah. as a function of uh, uh, range and the Doppler. Yes. Doppler. Yeah. So, for example, not to try to talk very much, uh, depending on the pass uh, or the duration of the passes or the bandwidth, and also of the, for example, also the total duration of observation of the target. Yes. You can have information about, uh, you know, this uh, information about. Uh, let's say, resolution in velocity yes. and Doppler yes. in uh, range, and also uh, accuracy of things. So, things. so this is perhaps a, a useful uh, theoretical tool. Ambiguity functions might be a useful theoretical tool for your very interesting inves investigations. Okay, okay. Uh, this is my comment. My comment. Okay, okay. In the future, I, I will uh, work on it. Otherwise, it's very yes. Uh, also, I'd like to ask you a very short question. Uh, also, you have to have time in mind to do real life uh, measurements by using pedestrians. Uh, so, in uh, real life radar, radar measurements. So if, uh, so, if I'm moving over here, you have already your radar over there, you observe uh, I am the target. So, do you have in mind to do real life radar measurements in uh, real field? Oh, okay, real field? Yes. 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 Oh, 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 oh. MDPI census journal uh, in this year Jan January journal yeah. in, 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 in journal contains uh, detection pedestrian in real field. So if I have a chance, I can under introduce my research yes. result. Yes. 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 Thank you. So, dear colleagues, I will try to be as uh, brief as possible uh, for this uh, topic. Actually, uh, in real, real practice, I would need at least one hour to explain in some reasonable detail this thing, but I have only a few minutes to do this. 
So, uh, so this is a continuing uh, research effort by our research group uh, in the National Technical University of Athens School of Electrical Engineering, uh, in collaboration also with Professor Saudbekov, who is a full professor of physics in uh, Astana, the capital of Kazakhstan. And uh, this is the topic is uh, uh, the famous Sommerfeld radiation problem, radiation of a vertical vertical antenna above the terrain above the terrain. And, the, and the, uh, the purpose of research is twofold. First of all, is physical reasoning, so to have the clear understanding of the physical phenomena, uh, like reflected waves, scattered waves, and also surface waves, which are different uh, mechanisms. Uh, we can may explain later what is a surface wave. And the most practical thing is to calculate exact, in an exact fashion the path loss, the path loss in dB, the path loss uh, of... Uh, uh, propagation of waves over the uh, terrain. Uh, actually, I might say this in other, in other words. Uh, if you say that your antenna, your antenna, it's, uh, which is a, uh, you know that we have a lot of antennas in here in this bi region for radio, telecommunications, uh, I'm sorry, television, radio, mobile phones. And uh, please uh, say, give to me the parameters of your antenna, and I, I will try in my expertise to calculate the field, the exact value of the field, of course, in a scientific way, of course, uh, by theory, by, uh, by physics, uh, or nearby the antenna, or very far on the, the antenna, wherever, and, um, and, also, uh, and also the frequencies here is, uh, can be chosen at free. So it may be low frequencies or high frequencies, so in this uh, theoretical model. Uh, and not to, uh, of, of course, you know that there are a lot of uh, empirical methods, uh, and this is, a, this is a famous problem. Scientists are dealing with this problem since the 1900, like Sommerfeld and uh, Norton, uh, during the Second World War, I think, uh, or earlier, uh, they had a lot of interest to, to this famous problem. And nowadays, of course, uh, we have the well known Okumura and Hata model, to, which are empirical models to calculate the path loss and so on. So, very briefly, uh, this is Sommerfeld, uh, and there are uh, different mechanisms of propagation, and this is the geometry in our model, which is an exact electromagnetic model. Uh, the transmitter is here, di uh, with dipole moment P, P, which is connected to the current of your antenna, and uh, this is the point of observation. And we have, uh, uh, we have horizontal polarization, this is, this is in... Uh, uh, cylindrical coordinates, and this is horizontal polarization E rho, and also we have uh, vertical polarization E x. Actually, here the Earth is in y z axis, and the, this is the vertical direction in x axis. So we have E x polarization, which is vertical polarization, and E rho polarization, which is uh, horizontal polarization of the wave. We have the lossy ground with some losses in it. These are the losses of the ground, the conductivity, and the, this is the uh, wave number in the air this medium and the wave number in the loss medium which is the ground, the terrain, where here are the losses. So, just to, to describe, to give you an idea of our work, uh, so uh, we, 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 uh, we introduced, uh, I would, to our knowledge, a novel method, a novel method in spectral domain. Spectral domain. Uh, to our knowledge, a Professor Chu of the United States has done some similar work in the spectral domain, but it's different. Uh, okay, and of course Sommerfeld uh, did his work in the, in the spatial domain, not spectral. This is spectral domain, so in this is Maxwell's equations, and these are spectral quantities, the, electrical, the received electric and magnetic field at the receiver. These are spectral quantities, this is the Green's function tilde, which is in spectral domain. Professor Salbekov did that in his good knowledge of physics. And uh, uh, so this is uh, Green's function in spectral domain, this is the, the sources of the field. Uh, and uh, this is the wave vector. Uh, so these are the sources of the field, which has only uh, this rare error, this rock component, sorry, this horizontal component, sorry. And uh, this is the wave vector, which has horizontal direction, horizontal direction, and the vertical direction of the scattered waves, horizontal and vertical. And uh, this is the formula from the received electromagnetic field in the spectral domain, uh, K rho, actually, this is Ka, and this is Kx. Uh, uh, the formulas in the spectral domain from the sources give rise uh, to, the, to the received electromagnetic field. Uh, I don't have too much time to explain the details. Uh, so, uh, so here, we, after some mathematical calculations, 
we found a single spectral integral in k rho direction, which is the horizontal direction in um, uh, in cylindrical coordinates, the spectral uh, spectral quantity. Uh, so we finished that with single integral, like uh, simple simple integral integrals, and uh, so the the electric field has. See, once we have vertical antenna, the, the electric magnetic field is horizontal, and uh, the electric field is uh, has uh, a vertical component and uh, horizontal component. Of course, far away from the antenna, uh, this component dominates. If you have vertical antenna, far away you have vertical polarization of the field. Uh, okay, so uh, so uh, briefly speaking, uh, this is again the formulas for the sheet electromagnetic field as a function of a single integral in spectral domain. And uh, these are expressions for the direct field, the direct field for everywhere in space. So in large distances, we have only the large field component, which dominates. However, near the antenna, we have uh, near the antenna or, or in low frequencies also, we have this one over R square or one over R cube terms. In far field, we have only one over R terms for the direct field. Uh, this is transmitted field, but not so much practical interest. And uh, now in the high frequencies, to give you just an idea, in the high frequencies we use the stationary phase method. Uh, so we have a uh, large argument approximation of the Hankel function. And uh, uh, to give just only an idea, this is so we found, uh, this is the phase function, this is the amplitude function of the integral, and we use the sp stationary phase method. This is the, the only the one stationary point. Uh, this is the only one stationary point here, uh, which which corresponds, uh, dear uh, colleagues, corresponds to the high frequency reflection point. So this is the specular point. Corresponds to the specular point uh, for which angle of incidence equals to angle of reflection in that high frequency regime. So here we have lost the low frequency information. Uh, okay. So here phi is the grazing angle of the wave grazing angle of the way with respect to the terrain. And the kappa, kappa is, so k rho is the, uh, the wave number of propagation in the horizontal direction. Kappa is the wave number of propagation in the vertical direction, as you can see from the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so very briefly speaking, uh, this is the, uh, the result of the stationary phase method calculation for the received field in vertical polarization and horizontal polarization. And uh, this is analytical result, and this actually, this is, uh, this is a very simple result, actually. Uh, uh, so this is the, the final formula for the receipt field in the high frequency regime, where we have neglected the, the surface wave, because the frequency is high, the surface wave has been neglected here. Uh, so you have the, actually this is the field derived from the image point. This is, not, this is so, so simple. When I first uh, found out this, I was, uh, I was disappointed because I said I did so much research for what? For nothing, okay, only this formula. But it was not for nothing because uh, I checked in this way, we checked the accuracy of our method. So everything is, looks perfect here. Everything looks perfect and this is very, very promising. So not to uh, briefly stay, okay, this is the, the result in the high frequency regime, vertical and horizontal polarization. This is the usual Fresnel reflection coefficient, and this is the phase function, and so on. Uh, so uh, since these are parameters of some simulation, parameters of simulations of our, the height of the of the transmitter, the height of the receiver, the the current of the antenna, which is easily uh, easily connected with the power of the transmitted antenna. My students, of course, uh, have uh, know the. Using the concept of radiation resistance, you, you connect the, the current with the power emitted, the length, the length of the antenna. Here is a small dipole, uh, and uh, the parameters of the Earth, uh, and the, the relation between the uh, dipole moment and the current, uh, and the current. Some results here for the received fields uh, as, a, as a function of distance. Uh, we have several components like line of sight field. Uh, surface wave by Norton, not by us, by Norton is here, by Pro uh, Norton in uh, early in 1936, uh, very early results, uh, for comparison reasons, for comparison purposes. I don't have time to explain all the details of this. Surface, waves is most, surface wave is more important in, uh, in, uh, in low frequency. Low frequency. Uh, in 30 MHz we have larger surface wave. And total field, so total field, which is the coherent summation of the line of sight and the scattered field, uh, we have the coherent summation of this, and this makes the total, the total uh, field. 
uh, this is the space wave. Uh, so, uh, so uh, briefly talking, uh, next we examine uh, for low frequency case, we use the numerical integration because stationary phase method is, ha it's, uh, is for high frequencies only. In the low frequencies, uh, uh, numerical integration has to be used for several reasons uh, can, uh, that I can explain, explain to you. So we have again the parameters of uh, calculations. And we have results for uh, uh, here in, in, uh, in blue is the numerical integration of the spectral integral for, uh, uh, for uh, low frequencies and uh, for high frequencies you are using the stationary phase method. So uh, here is the deviation between these two curves because one is good for high frequencies and another is good for low frequencies. And so in the intermediate frequencies you might use one or the other. And all these things, guys, uh, dear colleagues, all these things is over the integration of the spectral, spectral, uh, spectral uh, uh, quantity k rho. Recently, we introduced uh, the angle of incidence alpha, uh, and now it is the topic of our current sets, because in this case, we have also some, one singularity at some point of the integration, which created some problems to us. By using the new transformation to the angle of distance alpha, this singularity problem has disappeared, which is very promising. And also, my Russian friends uh, uh, have also some Russian friends, uh, sorry to be this, uh, were very happy that now the integration was not the spectral quantity k rho. What is spectral k rho is difficult to understand what k rho means. But if you are talking about uh, about uh, angle of distance alpha, is something very easy to understand. So this is our new resets coming in the near future. Uh, so, uh, so to uh, give you a final idea, we made uh, extensive calculations <coughs> of the field, of the received field, uh, at short distances and long distances, uh, several scenarios. So, uh, now my students, if you ask my students to calculate your field, let's say at, a, let's say at frequency high or low, near or far the antenna, they can calculate for you uh, the field, the total field, uh, with uh, good accuracy and reasonable, with reasonable results, we think. So there are here extensive investigations, not to, to tire you very much, in extensive investigations of the received field uh, for high frequency or low frequency, uh, or uh, near the antenna or far the antenna, they can predict for you in this scientific uh, uh, way, exact way, with Maxwell's equations, uh, the field. The field with accurate uh, calculations. Uh, these are uh, similar plots. Similar plots. I could talk to you for another half an hour about this, but I don't have time. And uh, this is the, in the, uh, the uh, insertion of a new variable alpha, which is the angle of incidence. So now the integration now is with respect to alpha, the incident angle alpha. And actually, I can might say here the following that uh, the following that here are here we, did, we found out where the surface waves are actually. Here we have this propagation, propagation, uh, uh, this is have, uh, uh, the integration, the integration over alpha is here, and uh, here is this phase factor, and uh, 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 or here, I can show it here is the phase factor, and when you, your integration variable uh, integration variable uh, uh, takes uh, so for smaller values you have the reflected fields, for larger values you have the surface waves. This is the most very important, very important. So the, our next future research will be for values of k rho larger than k zero one. You have the surface waves. This is very important and it's a new me another mechanism, which is important for rather uh, low frequencies and low altitudes, low altitude of antennas. Uh, also, this is uh, for low altitude of antennas, we have also surface waves. We cannot neglect them. Uh, so, more or less, I think this is my, the, the, this, more or less, this is my result so far. And I don't want to tire, you have no time. And uh, I think that's all, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> yeah. And this is our future research with experimental data. Oh, so I, perhaps my, my last phrase. At uh, the time that time is over, yes. So ex just only two words, experimental data. All my students have already done comparisons with experiments that already done. I'm going to present this in Athens this October. Okay. This only these two words are very important, and these two words are very important. Surface waves and experimental data. Already work is done in that. It's very, very, very important. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See. Sorry to be a little bit out of uh,
So perhaps uh, uh, if you have other questions, or uh, we can move to the last. Uh, yes, we can move to the last talk. Uh, thank you. So, dear chairman, ladies, gentlemen, and on an audience on the live stream, my name is Jan Schneider. I am PhD student at Technical University of Košice, I, and I would like to present Vivaldi Antenna for you Weber Sensor Network. As you know, uh, ultra wideband systems uh, uh, hold great promise for a variety of applications, for example, in medicine. Uh, grown penetration radar, independent spectroscopy, <coughs> and uh, true wall measurements. These measurements we do at our department. Uh, and one more, one more thing, uh, with our antenna we don't have UV radar. So, uh, for example, if we have some bad guy behind the wall and we do know that where is that, get that guy for police, we use this UV radar. Only, for example, if uh, someone lost on the uh, avalanche. For these systems, uh, we use some commercial antennas. As you see, this is Gazondas, uh, double ridge, ridge get horn, and uh, quad ridge get horn. And this is my antenna for comparison. This is matches only. Uh, <coughs> on second image, we can uh, see uh, this is experiment measurements of uh, detecting of movement. Uh, during uh, breathing, we detected this small movement. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, my antennas, and uh, for comprehension, this is a uh, horn antenna. This one is much bigger. So, the antenna. Uh, my antenna is uh, whole designed by, uh, designed, optimi optimized, and simulated in uh, CST Microwave Studio. The whole antenna is uh, formed by analytical curves. A con a connect all curves and uh, uh, these curves have uh, own variables and uh, for these variables I used for optimization. Uh, antenna is printed on around uh, 600, uh, relative permittivity is 6.15 and thickness is 1.575. Dimensions of antenna is this. Uh, you can see this is the uh, manufacturer antenna. Uh, the step of uh, radiation pattern is 1 uh, gigahertz. It's GIF, so maybe. And this is the results. Uh, this is measured by vector network analyzer. Uh, uh, this is for 2 gigahertz, radiation pattern from 2 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz, and 6. And uh, you can see uh, simulated and measurement. Uh, measured are red and simulated are dashed blue is a very good agreement. Also, antenna can be measured with uh, pulse uh, UVB radar. Uh, this is the block scheme of, uh, or block diagram of measurement. Uh, the, simple is where, uh, the principle is very simple. We transmit a narrow pulse to the antenna, and from antenna this pulse is reflected, and we obtain this pulse in the scope, and according to lines we set this observation window uh, and we obtain an impulse response. As you can see, we compare this impulse response with uh, commercial antennas. Uh, this is the pulse. Uh, is reduced because the pulse have uh, 30 volts and uh, this is only relative amplitude. And this maximum value is 200 millivolts. So this is only relative. As you can see, our antenna, blue line designed, uh, have low ringing than other antennas. This is goes on dust. This is the small one, big one goes on dust. And on this picture, double ridge get wave hogan and quad port A and port B. Uh, and uh, from uh, impulse response, we obtain uh, also a return loss of uh, our antenna. Uh, as you can see, uh, we see good agreements to 5 or 6 uh, gigahertz and up to is low mismatches because of uh, hardware limitations of, of our radar and of noise. So conclusion, uh, the antenna works from 810 uh, megahertz to almost 12 gigahertz. Average gain is 
uh, experiment uh, produced similar results to simulations. Antenna have a small size suitable for our use in true on measurements. So, this is everything. Is there a question for you? Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Possible applications of your antenna is uh, but in which areas? In, in, uh, indoor? Uh, indoor uh, Possible applications of your antenna is most for the uh, for our uh, measurements for two volt measurements Pardon? for two volt. Ah, I see, yes, yes, I see. We have yes, some yes. people so uh, uh, two uh, behind the wall, yes. and we won't detect him or uh, detect uh, the movements of breathing. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. Very, very nice. Yeah. <coughs> Other questions, please. Other questions. So thank you once again for attending uh, this uh, session. This was a very interesting. After my point, and let's have a nice lunch.